Okay, so um, this is the second book that I wanted to get out to show you from the collection of the British Sundial Society. Um, the main reason why I chose this book is because it's really very pretty. Um, nothing more intellectual than that. I saw this book whilst I was looking through the collection um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to get it out and have a bit of a research to find out about it and bring it out to show you. So you can see this here. Similarly to the previous book, it is a book of sundials and also similarly to that book, it's a popular book. It's um, not scientific, very much not academic, this particular book, um, and it's intended for a general audience. Now, I say it's beautiful. It has this beautiful dust cover on this particular one. There are, there are two copies of this in the um, British Sundial Society Library. Um, this one has its dust cover, the other one doesn't, and the painting is... Um, printed and then stuck on separately to the dust cover. But I wanted to just remove that too to show you the cover of the actual book itself. So it has this fantastic kind of art deco styling to it all over the book on every side of the cover and the spine. And I shall just move that out of the way there. And you can see the aesthetic of this book is very much um, kind of the point of it. It has these plates um, stuck throughout it, but the style, the, um, the, the font that's been used, the fact that most of it is printed in this kind of dark grey ink rather than black, um, and it's got all these little decorative details. Um, all of this basically um, uh, you know, goes to show this, this is a book that was designed to be looked at. Um, the, the paper is good quality, it's thick paper with um, these kind of rough decal edges. Um, so yes, this is a book that's, that's designed as a, as a beautiful object as much as anything. As you can see from the title page, this book includes um, sundials and mottos with eight illustrations in colour by Alfred Rawlings and 36 drawings um, by Warrington Hogg. So, um, the content of the book starts with a, an essay on old sundials by Lancelot, Cr Lancelot Cross. Now, I have been unable to find out anything at all about Lancelot Cross. I did have a quick flick through the beginning of his essay, and it's rather pompous um, and very kind of philosophical um talking uh, basically a lot of it is talking about um questions of time and what sundials can tell us about that and yeah it's it's quite difficult to read um but that's followed then by sundial mottos in a similar way to the previous book that i showed you however um this particular book is much less um formal about it this is not an academic collection of sundials this is of, of sundial mottos um this is um, yeah, so this is, this is um, just collections of mottos. Some of them have um, uh, translations, some of them don't. Some of them have rather um, facetious translations. I'm trying to find here. So, for instance, Carpe Diem, which, um, as most people know, is tran often, usually translated as seize the day, here has take the cash in hand and wave the rest. So, um, as I say, this is very much not an academic piece of work. Um, however, it is rather beautiful. Um, so, as well as those eight um, plates with the colour um, plates on, um, which were painted by Alfred Rawlings. Alfred Rawlings was um, a known artist in this, in this kind of style. There are also drawings by Warrington Hogg. Now, the Warrington Hogg referred to here is Herbert Warrington Hogg. He lived... Um, from 1862 to 1893 and he was a designer for Royal Crown Derby so he did porcelain designs. Um, he also is known for having um, produced works on sundials obviously he produced illustrations of sundials but he produced his own books which were published um, in 1892 to 1893. Um, it was a book in a number of volumes and it seems as though these illustrations have been taken from that. This particular um, book was published in a number of different editions from 1914 um, until... Yes, yeah, so the first edition was published in 1914. This one was published 19, in the 20s. Let me get the exact date so I don't say the wrong thing. Yes, yeah, 1922. Um, 
So there were at least two editions. Um, I've found references online to a number of different editions of this book. So this was some time after Warrington Hogg had um, done his drawings, published his work, and actually after Warrington Hogg had died as well. Um, so it would be quite interesting to know the mechanism by which these illustrations um, were acquired in order to be included in this particular volume. So, so yes, um, a, an interesting little book. And as I say, very pretty, much more of... Um, Something that you would have as a beautiful object, um, not really much um, in, in the way of in-depth information about sundials, unlike the books that I'm going to show you shortly. <laughs>